In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Whenever I hear one of the gospel stories about the gathering together of the 12 disciples, it calls to mind one of my favourite movie tropes, which is the calling together of a motley rat, ragtag crew that apart from being gathered for some great task under a unifying leader, otherwise has no business being together. So examples of that, The Fellowship of the Ring, Ocean's Eleven, Fast and the Furious franchise, Luke, Han, Leia, Chewie, and the Rebellion in Star Wars. There are so many. And I see Jesus' calling of disciples as being a bit like that. You've got the fishermen who have left their nets, the tax collector who has left his tax booth, the faithful skeptic, the former terrorist, the financially savvy one, and a few whom we know hardly anything about at all, apart from a, a very brief line or two in the scriptures. So all in all, a motley crew, the, the fellowship of the gospel. The sheer bizarre composition of Jesus' people is a mystery which demands an explanation. We have no business being here together except for the reality that Jesus has touched or got a complete hold on each of our lives. Each of us can probably be hard work at times. We don't see eye to eye. But nevertheless, we are a people who have claimed the foundational identity that is offered to us through Christ. Now, as said at the very start of the service, we are doing something different today as we anticipate the baptism of Sweetie Debbie next Sunday. And after seeing how it goes today, I hope to do something like this um, next year in Lent, God willing. Um, I hope we have a group of adults who are prepared for baptism. And there are a few reasons for marking the journey to baptism in an intentional way. One is, having some course of preparation and even a ritual in worship in the lead up to baptism honours the grace that is extended to us that is marked by baptism. So we are baptised into Christ's life, death and resurrection, and that is God's free gift. It was God's free gift, but it was also costly. It's all right, mate. God's free gift, but a very costly one. And the cross must never be regarded as cheap. So some weeks of preparation at least is appropriate, it seems. Another, as a community of the faithful, I think it is right that when we are invited by God to help plant the seeds of faith in someone or give water to seeds that are already there, we do our part faithfully and as well as we are able that the growth God gives can come through people who have been well prepared. And I trust God can work with them, you know, even with our most limited and faltering efforts, but I think most of us would want to give our very best to God. And here's another one. I think each of us, every one of us, me included, can benefit from periodic reminders of some of the core aspects of what is involved in being a disciple of Jesus. And that is, a disciple is an active learner who is in a relationship 
that is continuous and who has an expectant posture towards the one we learn from, that is Jesus. That is why the ritual to be used today draws on the title used before the word Christian was adopted, and that is a follower of the way. Christianity, being a follower of Jesus, is a way of life. It is a way of life. And as just said, we have an expected <coughs> disposition towards God. We trust that each moment is open to the working of God. And I don't mean that in the way that prosperity gospel preachers do, or as I preached the other week, I have any sense that God owes me anything, nor do I have any illusions about the reality that churches go through cycles of life, death and resurrection. But we have an expectant disposition towards God. I'm going to borrow a really wonderful image from Rowan Williams at this point. But think of it in terms of a bird watcher. A bird watcher. Now I've got absolutely no experience of bird watching myself, but I understand that quite a lot of it just involves waiting, uh, being poised, alert, just knowing that this is the kind of place where something extraordinary can suddenly just burst into view. And pressing on with that bird-watching metaphor offered by Williams, and picking up on the Holy Spirit as a dove image that is given through Scripture, the Holy Spirit is there to kindle our awareness. The Spirit brings to life words of ancient scripture for us, for our formation as disciples. The Spirit takes up very ordinary elements of our world in our sacramental worship and gives them back to us imbued with the life of God, making the connection between Jesus and bread and wine come alive. And vitally important, as disciples of Jesus, the Spirit can help us take that attitude of expectancy from God into our engagement with one another. So as you speak with one another after worship and as you pray and sing and be present beside one another during worship, a fair question to ask is... What is Jesus giving me through this person, through this group? And more scarily, perhaps, you could ask yourself, what is Jesus giving this person through me? What is Jesus giving you through the people here? So as a minister, <coughs> I've got to say, I've experienced seeing our faith freshly stirred up within a person newly converting to the faith as a wonderful gift. It really is. So think for a moment on the gifts God has given you through each other. Maybe it was a, a gift of encouragement or a prophetic word. Maybe healing, presence, Forgiveness, maybe even the gift of rebuke and challenge, I don't know. Remember, we are the body of Christ, his spirit is with us, and in the fullest sense, that means being a disciple on the way, the way of Jesus. So in terms of our our local fellowship of the gospel, our motley crew, I believe it right. We expect that Christ speak through us to others 
just as they speak to us. And of course, not just here, but outside as well. In whatever contexts and spheres of life you operate in, family, friends, work, community groups, you can communicate through word, action and sheer presence the life of Christ and invite others to hear the call of Jesus which went to his disciples and which still goes out to all the world. Follow me. Come and see. I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Lord be with you. Mm -hmm.